It is the 12th of July 2017 and that can mean only one thing. It is time for Boruto episode 15, A New Path. And it's time to wrap up the ghost arc, basically, because that's what this episode was. There wasn't all that much new in terms of plot, apart from the end, which I will discuss in a minute. But generally speaking, this episode was what I would describe as rather comfy. Nothing really major happened, but they kind of just wrapped everything up from the last two episodes and sowed some seeds for stuff to come with, obviously, the tuning exams, which is around what happened in Boruto the movie, I guess. So really, the main focus, or the A-plot, as some people would call it, of this episode was setting up new three-man teams and stuff, which is pretty cool. Obviously, as everyone expected, Inoshika Cho became a formation again, which I assume they'll keep. Because at the moment, these aren't like concrete three-man teams yet, obviously, because Borto and Mitsuki aren't teamed up with Sarada. But it's cool that they're kind of setting up. And honestly, it does make me kind of excited to watch the tune-in exams. One thing that did frustrate me a little bit in Boruto the movie, but I completely understand why they did this, is that we didn't get to see the tune-in exams at all, really. They were really fun in the original Naruto series. And there was that filler arc in Shippuden about the tune-in exams that everyone else took that got them to the rank of tune-in while Naruto was away training. And I thought that was kind of fun as well. It's just a kind of excuse to have weird challenges and different characters interact with each other and stuff. And talking about characters, boy, did we come across one or two interesting ones in this one. This dude looks really cool. The, the guy on the left, obviously, there with the shades and the tattoo on his face. I'm not sure. I don't imagine he's the child of anyone. He's probably a new character we may see or ever. But I don't know. His design is like really weird. His tie is kind of all frilly and stuff. Why does he have a tattoo on his face? Also, the guy in the background has a kind of quiff kind of thing going on. Maybe he's not, you know, a bad guy, but kind of the punk thing, the pompadour that's weirdly popular in Japan for some reason. There's also a psychic gothic lolita that was interesting who can make her doll fly i'm sure she'll play into it later or maybe she won't and she'll just be a background character like the guy in the shades who i hope isn't gonna remain a background character that would be fantastic unless they just turn out to be really generic characters which they probably will because they haven't been introduced in the first 15 episodes but yeah barring that there's not all that much more to talk about this episode really the little fight on the scaffolding was cool seeing that Mitsuki yet again just doesn't give a shit and destroyed it because hey it's convenient or whatever I guess. I'm talking about the fight on the scaffolding actually something I do want to talk about is that I haven't really discussed this in my reviews so far but man the background music is pretty great. I don't have a way of adding it to this review really i don't even know if they've released the official soundtrack maybe they have i'll have to look that up but it's unlikely it's going to be on amazon and i'm not really looking to import a cd from japan just so i can put little clips of it in my review although i may try and find something to put as backing music something light in the background i don't know though but yeah the music for the scaffolding fight was really cool it was very reminiscent of like tokusatsu openings kind of like the sentai series the kamen rider or ultraman it's kind of a man with that kind of tone singing and it's actually i think the first time that a song with vocals has appeared in any Naruto or Boruto episodes, for that matter. And it was just really cool. It kind of felt a little bit cheesy and a little bit 80s anime. But I think that kind of added to his charm. And I don't know. I'm going to need to track down the name of that song. If I can do that before this episode goes up, I'll put it either as an annotation in this image or below in the video description. And talking about music, the song that played during Shino's talk with Sumire in that room was also kind of really nice. It's a kind of orchestral choral mix that I really liked. It had a sad, melancholy feel to it, but it wasn't overblown. It wasn't very in your face about it. It's quite subtle. And genuinely, I'm really impressed with the Boruto soundtrack so far. I'm no music expert, so I don't know, maybe these are horrible tracks that are objectively bad, but I don't know, I, I quite like them. And this episode, I thought, did a cool thing of showcasing how it could have both an exciting, upbeat song 
and a sad downbeat song, both in the same episode, and they both worked for the scenes that they featured in. And of course, right at the end, we did get a glimpse of Sasuke, which is cool. I have noticed that because they're using Sasuke and Kakashi and some other characters very fleetingly, it does feel a lot nicer when they appear, even if it's for a 20-second scene or something. It's just kind of cool that they're using them fleetingly and only when necessary, rather than kind of bringing all of the cast back and going, hey, everyone's back again and they're here all of the time and you'll see them loads. And yeah, I was actually quite excited to see Sasuke, which wasn't really true for Shippuden at all. I thought he was cool and all, but they either never used him at all or all of the time. There was never really any in-between. So this is kind of cool that him and Naruto are kind of meeting up secretly and stuff. And man, the end of the episode is kind of cool and obviously builds towards the events that occurred in Boruto the movie that I imagine they'll either do differently or they'll expand upon it, much like Dragon Ball Super did with the Gods of Destruction and Resurrection F arc. But yeah, from this screenshot I got, I think it's the two bad guys from Boruto the movie. And they've discussed really interesting things like the dimension that Kaguya used at the end of Shippuden. These people can also kind of sense and enter, and one of them is saying there's some kind of interference in one of them. And also implies there's quite a few Otsutsuki clan members, or I think Otsutsuki is the correct word. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. But man, this is actually really exciting, because, well, we know what these two guys are like from their appearance in the movie, but they have mentioned other people. So we're kind of getting an idea of the organisation of bad guys for a few arcs of Boruto, I imagine, unless they're going to maybe eke them out really slowly. Maybe these guys will appear first, and then later on other Otsutsuki clan members will appear. I don't know, but it's kind of cool. I like these guys in Boruto the movie, and fighting them in the Road to Boruto expansion for Ultimate Ninja Storm 4 was equally pretty cool. And it's nice to kind of have an adversary now. There's someone who we know is going to be the bad guy. And also, I know it got a lot of flack from a lot of people, but I really like the whole weird alien ninja things that Kaguya was a member of. So I'm actually really hyped to see the rest of these guys, maybe to expand upon what exactly it is they are, and maybe explain whether they are actually aliens or they're some kind of deities or whatever. Because, I mean, both Naruto and Sasuke are essentially kind of godlike now. So it wouldn't be that weird if they were actually just some kind of gods or whatever. And that brings us to the end of the episode review. As I said, not too much went on. It was quite a light episode until the last two minutes or whatever. And that's fine. It's a shounen anime, so it's going to have a long closure episode, really, just to reintroduce class rep back into the class and stuff. And, you know, set up that tuning exams are going to happen soon. Hopefully in the next few episodes I'd like to see them start it or whatever, but I don't know, maybe they're doing some other arc before that. I'm talking about next time. It seems like that's exactly what they're doing, really. The students are trying to find out the best team members for people to work with and stuff. And we get a little bit more focus on Iwabe, who I feel has kind of been sidelined a bit for the ghost arc. But, you know, that's understandable. With such a large cast of characters, you're not going to have everyone come to the forefront in every arc. So it's understandable that he's kind of sidelined. Also, we get to see a little bit more of Denki next week. So an Iwabe and Denki heavy episode, it looks like. And another quite relaxed, not particularly plot heavy episode. They'll probably have one or two little stingers at the end or beginning or something. And as always, thank you very much for watching. If you do want to subscribe, that would be awesome. Either like or dislike the video if you felt strongly either way. And do feel free to comment because comments are always welcome. And let me know that people are watching these things. And I'd just like to say thank you to everyone watching this and who has watched my previous videos. I'm genuinely impressed that my videos have passed like the 20 views count because that's kind of what I expect with all of my videos. I'm not a very big YouTube personality person thing. So it's nice to see that the effort I put in is kind of reciprocated by so many people watching. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>